Okay, we got there in the end. Excellent. So um, I've shared this Excel file with you. You will note that over on the left, uh, I've got my independent variable, which is pendulum length. And I have the data for each of my trials here. Uh, what we're looking at for the dependent variable is period. And over on the right of each of my trials, I have uh, a value for average. Uh, and this is the average of each of these trials. Note that we have a lot of significant figures over here. And that Logger Pro has a tendency to kick out more significant figures than we need. Uh, that's fine, it's not a problem. So this is the formula for average in Excel. And if you just hit the uh, equal sign and start typing average, it'll pop right in. And then you just select the range that you want uh, for your data. So, <clears throat> and once you've done that, it's also really easy to copy and paste it into other cells and it will automatically select uh, the right range um, if you've set it up appropriately. So for example, uh, here, it's automatically selected this range of data because uh, of the relative cell position. Okay, so there's averaging, not really a problem, should be very, very fast. Now, procedural uncertainty has a slightly more complicated formula. Uh, when we double click on it, uh, you'll see that I've got the maximum function for Excel and it has the exact same data set, trial one through trial five. Okay, so that's what I selected for max. For my minimum, again, I've selected the same data set. Now, it's important that you have parentheses around your maximum and minimum because uh, we need to divide the change between these two by two, okay? So we need parentheses here. Otherwise, you're going to get maximum minus the minimum divided by two, just like you would if you're calculating this in your calculators, and that is a problem, okay? So parentheses are key. Okay, so once we've input this formula, and again, I've shared this document with you, so you can just copy and paste it if you need to, once you've input that formula, uh, it will calculate then procedural certainty automatically. Nice. Thanks, Mr. Van Lowe. We love you, Mr. Van Lowe. I know, guys. Settle down. Settle down. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so next, excuse me. <clears throat> next, we're looking at fractional uncertainty. And remember that fractional uncertainty is simply... Uh, our procedural uncertainty divided by, in this case, the average value. This should be, uh, by the way, a T sub zero in parentheses, but every time I tried to use a subscript, Excel crashed, and I have attempted it repeatedly. So good job, Microsoft. Well done. Okay, so the formula here, very simple. Equal sign, then we select uh, cell H3 here, which is my procedural uncertainty. Enter a slash for division and click on cell G3, which will give me a T sub zero uh, or my average data point. Okay, and then as before, we can just copy and paste this down and it will fill in all of the cells conveniently. Uh, note that procedural uncertainty should always, always, always have one significant figure. And that's also true of absolute uncertainty. So this value, and, and this, is a, this is a really important point that um, a lot of students forget, this value should never have more than one sig fig. And in Excel, we can change that just by clicking on these buttons here which will let me add or subtract uh, decimal places. So right here. All right, so once we have fractional uncertainty, then percentage uncertainty is really easy because percentage uncertainty is just fractional uncertainty times 100 
uh, I've actually used the previous formula and multiplied it by 100, but I could just as easily um, go equal sign times 100. Uh, you'll note, and I get the exact same value. You'll note in Excel, like uh, a lot of places in IB physics, there are a million ways to uh, get the same result. Okay, so again, just copy and paste, and there you go. So those are all your formulae, all in one place. Now, we are not finished yet. We still need to insert a chart. So what I'm going to do is select my data, my key data here, which is the independent variable uh, and the dependent variable, which is my average of my uh, trials. Okay, I will then go to insert in Excel and I will select uh, a scatter chart. Okay, just go for the first one and it's going to bring in simple data points in theory and there we go. All right, once my chart is in, I'm going to find that I'm missing a lot of information that I need to fill in. Note that you could also copy and paste this information into Logger Pro. If you prefer the formatting for Logger Pro, that's not a problem. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to do it in Excel for right now. Okay, so we are missing a number of chart elements here. So uh, you'll note that we're in the Chart Design tab now, and we're going to add chart elements. First thing we need are axes titles and I don't know why there's not a way to select both of these at the same time. Seems pretty silly, but anyway, there they are. So our horizontal axis title should be pendulum length in this case. Uh, your independent variable may or may not be the same. And we also need a unit here, which is going to be meters. Our vertical axis title will be period, uh, T, and our unit, of course, is seconds. Okay, so there we go. Next, uh, we are going to need error bars, of course, and for error bars, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so I can see my data. And we go add chart element, add error bars, we're going to need more error bar options because our initial options are not sufficient. Okay, so here you can see they've put in some very big error bars and we need to change that. So first thing I'm going to do is click on my horizontal error bars. And for the horizontal error bars, what we have here is the absolute uncertainty of our pendulum length and it's given here. So I'm just going to put that absolute uncertainty into fixed values. Okay, and uh, when I hit enter, my error bars are now so small that they can't be seen, okay? So that, that's kind of not ideal, ideal, so it's not a bad idea just to go to pendulum length here, my, um, my label, and add plus or minus 0 0.005. So I'm going to do that because it just makes it really clear what my uncertainty is. Okay, not millimeters, there we go. Okay, so this is never a bad idea where you have invisible error bars and I recommend you do it. Okay, so now we move on to the vertical error bars and this is where things get a little bit trickier uh, and the reason for that is because we have uh, no longer a fixed value for our vertical error bars, we want our procedural uncertainty to be on the chart, okay? So what we do here is go down to custom and we are going to specify the value, okay? So here we have the positive error value and that's going to be uh, from our procedural uncertainty. So we're 
so for example, in the case of my first uh, manipulation, I have plus 0 0.05. Well, remember that procedural uncertainty is plus or minus uh, these values, okay? So that means we can just use the same data for our negative error value, and we just click that guy, and there we go. Uh, we could have just copied and pasted these as well. And when, we, when we hit OK then, what we're going to find is that we have error bars of varying lengths. Professional. Um, note that you can do this in Logger Pro as well. So uh, we're done, right? No. We're not done because uh, this particular chart is wasting a lot of space. We want to maximize our data. Many students feel that they need to show the origin on a chart. You don't. There's no reason to do that. So uh, we need to edit our axes. So I double click on the axis and then uh, here we have under this tab axis options, and that's what we want. So I'm going to set the boundary, and here it looks like 0 0.8 is going to be a good minimum boundary. Okay, and your data is going to vary from this, so choose whatever makes sense. But you'll note that all that wasted space now goes away. Okay, so now I can double click on my x-axis, and I get the same uh, dialog here over on the left. And for here, uh, 0 0.15 seems like a rational place to start. And now my chart is looking pretty good, but nope, yep, no origin, and that is fine. The last thing we need to insert here is a trend line. And this looks like a linear relationship, so we will go linear. There it is. Uh, we can also add some formatting options here just by clicking on it. That will bring up trend line options. And we can go uh, display equation on chart. And there it is. Uh, if we wanted to, we could extend the boundaries uh, here to the edges of the chart. But I'm just going to leave it here right now. You can do that by forecasting, um, but it can get a little bit messy. So I'm I'm just going to leave it alone. Okay, uh, last thing we need for our chart is a rational title. Um, so we'll just call it pendulum period versus length. And that seems like a good one. And from this point, we can copy and paste this just by right clicking into a uh, Word document or other thing of our choice. Okay, so here's a new Word document, and I paste it in theory, and there it is. Okay, so from here, uh, you could also add like a figure one or something like that, where you would uh, give a little more detailed explanation of, what, of what's happening and go from there. But that is pretty much it, and I will upload this video to YouTube and slap it into uh, my website. So. Please let me know if you have any questions, and we'll go from there. All right.